The prosecution there bringing up Hawaii as evidence of premeditation and planning. Let's bring in our trial attorneys who are standing by to talk about this case. Trial attorney Nicole Bernecki and retired lieutenant and commanding officer of the Nassau County Police K-9 unit. Mike Gold is here as well. Uh, Nicole, let me start with you. Uh, this is a really fascinating case in the sense that they were able to catch her and that her husband did not die. He did go into a coma, though, from this poisoning. Uh, can you talk about just your initial reaction to this case and what you think a judge is going to lean into when listening to these details? Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, my initial thoughts are that uh, the, uh, the punishment seems really lenient. Uh, based on um, the evidence of the premeditation that she had and based on all the planning and it's, it was clearly intentional. She um, married the guy and she immediately proceeded to um, executing her plan of getting uh, getting the assets, you know, going to Hawaii and all that. So it seems to me like it's a pretty, pretty lenient, lenient punishment that they're, that they're discussing right now. And I know that there is, so the, what the prosecutor was discussing, um, you have to go down the list of factors. So there are aggravating factors, there are mitigating factors. Uh, from what I know, there was no prior uh, criminal um, um, history in her in her life. However, at the same time, if someone is uh, so able, um, uh, capable of, of, of executing a plan like this, of coming up with it, well, maybe show some tendencies that have to be taken taken into account for the future. And the prosecutor just said that um, the potential for um, the general public not being safe is relatively small, but I think you could make an argument that uh, if she was able to marry a man and then uh, come up with a plan like this and execute it, then perhaps there's someone else out there who is at peril. Mm. So very, very interesting how, how this is going to end in terms of sentencing. All right, the danger to the potential public. Mike, uh, the financial motivation here that the prosecution is outlining seems to be blatant, no doubt. The investigating officers, once they came across that information, uh, really took a hard look at the spouse. Nicole, we're hearing a lot about the pre-sentencing investigation, the PSI, and the prosecutor saying, look, in that PSI report, there wasn't anything about her a significant problem with her mental health needs, but did say that there was something there. Do you expect we're going to hear more about that during the defense's presentation to this judge? Absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, sentencing is a mechanical process where um, a list of factors has to be analyzed one by one. Um, it's almost like a scorecard and then they, they come up with a, a sentence that's appropriate. So um, as much as the prosecution will be discussing aggravating factors, which we just heard her do very, very well, um, it, the defense will be doing exactly the same, just the opposite of that, which is the mitigating factor. So if there's anything in her um, as state of mind that can be used to defend her actions, um, Yes, we should hear that, and I'm actually very curious because so far uh, it seems that uh, that level of planning and that level of execution rather, I would say, requires a, a, a stable and cold mind, and I don't think that there is um, any craziness involved in this. Uh, it's definitely premeditated um, and definitely requires, uh, you know, sticking to the plan, uh, making sure that everything is in place. Um, it, making sure that the evidence is not found. She was uh, deleting things. She was making sure that uh, as little can be found later down the road. So I, I, I'm very interested in what they, they will raise in terms of her mental state that could be defensive to what she actually did. Yeah, high level of planning and execution, to your point, to even do this in a way that he didn't detect as a veterinarian who works with these kind of drugs is just baffling to me. Uh, stand by to our guests. Coming up, the defense is going to be painting Amanda Chapin as a, quote, good person who had a lapse in judgment. We're going to hear their plea for a much lesser sentence in this case. Do you think there's a risk of, especially when it's a judge and not a jury, going that way, the good character way, when we are talking about a woman who planned out a poisoning? Uh, it's very interesting what the defense attorney did there. I'm a big enthusiast of, of courtroom um, 
uh, activities, anything, anything that uh, that they say, and and how these arguments are phrased. So this was very interesting to watch. This was not um, a defense strategy whereby they would be uh, putting some. Um, mental health issues uh, into light. This was more, she was a great person. Uh, she was, um, you know, uh, going to spelling bees, going to church. Uh, but what I find very interesting about this is that um, uh, talking about church, about how uh, religious and spiritual she was, and then forgetting the fact in the same statement that she actually uh, did something that's a, a, a sin uh, in her religion. Um, how do you juxtapose that? So that's one thing that I find very interesting. The second thing is that it appears that she was uh, pretty industrious, that she had a lot of skills, um, uh, medical skills, uh, yoga, uh, all these things. So why uh, marry someone and right after that go straight to uh, attempting to kill him for gaining financial independence? So a judge, I don't think a judge will buy it. A jury would have, maybe, but not a judge. Oh, absolutely. We are out of time, but Mike Gold and Nicole Bernecki, thank you so much for weighing in on this case. We have a lot more in the sentencing of Amanda Chapin happening in the next hour as defense attorneys are arguing that the victim's children bonded over vilifying Chapin, the defendant there, and began to see things that were never there. So we have a lot more ahead. We're paying attention to that courtroom and a courtroom in Florida where Sarah Boone in the suitcase murder trial is supposed to have a hearing. It hasn't started yet, but we'll take you there live as soon as it begins. For now, you're watching Court TV, your front row seat to justice.